Some of the main references in both paintings are of indigenous people as dying, becoming irrelevant, and you know, these were popular themes in the 19th century. That really uh, sort of gave people permission to kind of come in and, and, and dispossess us of our lands. My name's Kent Monkman. I'm Cree. I'm a member of Fisher River First Nation in Manitoba. I've been living in Toronto for some time. I'm standing here in the Great Hall at the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York, and I'm the recipient of this inaugural commission for works in the Great Hall. And I have two paintings here, a diptych. It's called Mistagosawak which is a Cree word to mean uh, the French people or more broadly for European people. These are two paintings that explore themes of you know, the, the migrating populations of European settlers that arrived here on Turtle Island in North America and how they displaced First Nations people. There are many themes in these paintings that also reference romantic ideas that those settler populations had about First Nations people and how those were perpetuated through their sculptures, through their paintings. So I'm referencing those sculptures and paintings in my work. Kent's work, it's bold, it's big, it's audacious, and it just seems right at home in this big, bold, audacious space that is um, highly symbolic. This is new for uh, the United States. I, I feel like they're a bit behind Canada in terms of how uh, they think about representation of indigenous points of view in, in museums. Uh, you know, in, in institutions in Canada, we have uh, and we've had indigenous curators in, in museums uh, more recently. Um, so I think it's, it represents a shift for museums in the United States and it's exciting to see that happen, you know. Uh, museums often change very slowly, so this is like, you know, kind of a huge shift in terms of how it might, you know, send a very strong and powerful message to indigenous artists, but also to the, the, the very vast audience of, of the Met. A lot appealed to the museum about Kent's work. One aspect of the appeal had to do with his investigation, his real interrogation of the history of art. Um, the Met is really um, taking a look at itself about um, uh, our history and the, the, the kinds of stories we need to be telling. And Kent's, Kent's work tells some of the stories that we needed to be telling. I took inspiration from those heartbreaking photographs of migrating populations, you know, set afloat on these little, often too small boats, you know, hundreds of people crammed into these boats going to somewhere better. I love the old masters, I love Rubens, I love Titian, I love Delacroix, you know, and these were um, striking images to me because it was about, you know, this tension. With these large-scale paintings, really what I'm trying to do is to authorize indigenous experience, both historic and contemporary into this canon of art history. I mean, you know, we've been erased from the art history of this, of this continent. You know, the settler artists that came here, you know, they had their own vision of this continent, which was essentially an empty landscape. And so our points of view, our perspectives, have never really been in this canon of art history.